This conference will now be recorded. So very good evening. We have already learned about stress, strain, and then what what are various modulus like young modulus, bulk modulus, rigid modulus, etc. We had already learned. So today, specifically, we will be learning about stress, strain, carb. So what are the important Informations we get from a particular stress strain curve. So here I have taken a typical stress strain curve for a metallic wire. Metallic wire and that is that of a ductile metallic wire. We'll discuss even the classifications we can make from the graph also. We'll discuss that also today. So So in this figure, look, let me tell you what is being done here. We have taken a thin wire of a metal, thin wire of a metal. Suppose you have some metallic wire like this. And then what we are doing, there is a hook here. We are gradually putting some load here gradually we are putting load one after another that means we are increasing the load on this wire and as it is gradually being loaded as we know load means we are giving stress okay and so, hence there will be some strain strain means here in this case basically length change will be there and also if you have a have certain radius of the wire that also changes we'll discuss that that is called Poisson's ratio when the length is increasing then the radius also will be decreasing okay that means this is very general observation we have seen if you have a thick metallic wire if you just uh, pull like if you just stretch it that wire becomes thinner and thinner that means its length will increase whereas its diameter decreases so that we, we know now here as we gradually increasing the stress then we'll step by step as we increase the stress if we measure the strain and then plot a curb stress versus strain okay this is called stress strain curve in the y axis it is the stress and x axis the strain now look for a particular metallic wire we get a kind of this curve you see this sky blue curve so we go from o to a a to b b to c C to D, D to E. We'll discuss discuss all the points, all the regions. So as a as a general observation, if we ask a, a ordinary person, can you say something about this curve? He might be saying that C O to A it is linear, then A to C little bit curve, then again somewhat linear up to and it is increasing up to d and then d to c d to e it is decreasing so this is a very general observations any person can make but what are the physical significance of each region we'll see that look first of all we'll just take the region 
OA of the carb. So what does this OA? See OA means this to this. The region OA. What does this signify? When the see in this case, in this region, you look here up to OA, the strain is actually below one percentage. Strain is below one percentage. That means when the strain is very, very small, this OA part of the curve is actually linear. So we see here when strain is very small, is small, how small it is? It is almost less than one percentage. Okay, one percentage. Less than one percentage. Then this portion, OA portion of the curb is a straight line. Is a straight line. Straight line. What does this mean? When do we get straight line? We get straight line. See, we, we know from Ohm's law like this it goes. Okay, that means your see if this is V, this is I, that means V is directly proportional to I. Similarly, in this case also, when the straight line is obtained, obviously in this case we are not getting directly proportionality, but still we can say, actually we are getting proportionality directly, but we are not getting the slope one, okay, or 45 degree. We don't, we don't get slope 45 degree in this case, but it is, like stress and strain in this region, in this very region, stress is directly proportional to strain. Okay. And here, if the stress and strain is directly proportional to each other, then what we can see, what we can say, we can say that till point A, Hooke's law is satisfied. Hooke's law we had discussed in the last class. So Hooke's law is satisfied. Hooke's law is satisfied. Hooke's law is satisfied. Okay. Now we can say that A is the elastic limit or proportional limit. You can see that. At least we can say the proportional limit. We can say that A is the proportional limit. Up to that, this proportionality relation will be there between stress and strain. And beyond that, it will not be there. We can see that. We'll discuss the next portion also. So we have discussed here O to A. What we see? Here we see the strain is less. That's why stress and strain. So it is actually within the elastic limit. That's why Hooke's law is also satisfied. So this part we have understood. So this actually, actually, stating the elastic behavior of the object that means if you if you release the load any time between o and a at this portion immediately the wire will regain its own like its original length okay that's why you can see so this portion is actually depicting the elastic behavior, perfectly elastic behavior of the 
square. Now we'll go to the next region A to B to C. Look, we'll see now. If we go to the region A to B, A to B in this region, what is happening? The stress strain curve is slightly curved in the nature. You look A to B, it has bent a little bit. This becomes curved a little bit. So stress strain graph, stress strain graph is curved, curved. That means what? Immediate answer will be stress strain, they are not proportional. Stress and strain, they are not proportional. Okay? So this is what we can say. There is no proportionality relation between stress and strain in this region A to B. However, if the load is removed till B, see till B, if we remove the load in between A and B, any point in between A and B, what we see? So stress strain is not proportional, it is okay, but still, but still, if the load is removed, in between A and B, any point in between A and B, then the graph is retraced along BAO. Then the graph is retraced along the path C, B, A, and O. It will come back to O uh, along the same path, B, A, O. B, A, O. Okay? And the graph, now then, what does this mean? If it come back to O, that means it regains. The wire regains its original its original length, original length, okay? That's why this B point is called actually the elastic limit beyond which if you apply load further, there will be a permanent stress, uh, sorry, permanent strain happened, we will see that uh, between B and C. So this B point is called elastic limit because till B, if you remove the load in between any point in between A and B or even O and B, the body regains its original shape, size, length, etc. Okay? So that's why the portion OB of the curve is called elastic region, OB. Till OB, this curve is called elastic region, OB. So OB is called elastic region, elastic region. Elastic region and the point, point B is called elastic yield point. The point B is called elastic yield point or elastic limit. That we, so we have learned from here these things. And see, at this point, the stress corresponding to the yield point is called yield strength. The stress, see SY, it is SY. See the stress corresponding to point B, that is called yield point. See this strain strain sorry stress is called yield 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 strength it is called 
ill strength ill strength is why i'll repeat what we have learned here see in the reason a to b as we increase the load that means stress we see that the carb become little bit the graph become little bit carved what does that signify that signifies that the stress and graph like stress and strain they are not proportional to each other all right they are not proportional to each other means what hooke's law does not satisfy here hooke's law is not satisfied is not satisfied hooke's law is not satisfied in this region okay but still if the load is removed in between any point like uh, any point in between a and b then the graph is retraced along bao that means the path it's traced it will be retraced while you remove the load and it will reach eventually up to o okay that means it will regain its original shape size length etc so this ob part of the curve is called elastic region ob part of the curve is called elastic region because in between till point b if the load is removed the object will regain its original length therefore this b point is also called elastic limit or yield point yield point or elastic limit and the stress corresponding to this yield point or point b is called yield strength so these are the points we had learnt here now we'll go to the next portion if we stretch the wire beyond the elastic limit that means beyond b if we stretch the wire beyond b beyond its elastic limit then what happens the strain rapidly increases even for a small change in the stress look here this is the strain and this is the stress look now what happens in the sorry so i'll remove this part and then we'll discuss here itself so look here the b point is the elastic limit so we'll go to the third region b to c b to c region so what we see here if the wire is stretched between uh, uh, beyond the elastic limit the strain increases rapidly see so strain is this in the x axis See, even if the stress is very very increasing very very less strain increases a lot strain increases a lot if the load is removed at any point c suppose the load is so actually we are just looking not only c we are just looking the point here uh, b to d suppose b to d this region in this region Can you look this is the beyond this is beyond elastic limit beyond elastic limit beyond elastic limit if we stretch the wire beyond elastic limit we see this is the point see here even though stress is increasing very less but the strain is increasing a lot it is increasing very rapidly you can see that c and d between c and d there is a large large amount of strain produced okay this is around some uh, one or two percentage over here but strain here up to d it is 30 percentage so there is a large change in the strain even if your stress is changing this much it is very very less okay if the load is removed at any point c now if the load is removed at any point c now it is no longer going to retrace the curve c b a and o it is no longer going to go in that way 
rather what will happen it will directly follow the path you see here dotted path it will directly follow this path and even if you decrease the stress up to zero there will be a permanent strain permanent strain produced that is called permanent set permanent set so if the load is removed at any point c the wire does not come to its original length but traces the dashed curve c o prime you can see if i write this is o prime so c o prime it traced trace the curve c o prime and even on reducing the stress to zero a, a residual strain o o prime look this is the strain residual strain o o prime the strain is not becoming zero o o prime is remaining so the wire is said to have acquired a permanent set the wire is said to acquire a permanent set so what we have learned i'll write here so for a small change in stress point number 1 small change in stress a rapid change change in strain is observed now if load load is removed at c it is it is in the sense the wire wire is not going to regain the wire does not regain its original length okay that means does not retrace does not retrace retrace c b a o curve path okay rather rather it follow c o prime path and even after reducing the stress to zero there is the permanent there is a permanent permanent strain o o prime so that we have learned from here this is called permanent set as you see from 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 the figure now look when the curve is not retracing the same path then that is see what happens in that case generally stress strain curve what will happen suppose i draw the the curve this is strain this is stress if suppose the curve is going like this okay and it is coming like this okay that means it is actually not retracing the same path suppose it goes o a b and then come b c o okay okay go like this and come back like this then you look there is a loop here closed loop this is called hysteresis loop this you we will be learning even in case of magnetic materials hysteresis loop this is called hysteresis loop hysteresis loop 
that means it is lagging behind anyway so we'll learn in uh, the interpretation of this hysteresis loop later during learning the, mag the magnetic part in 12 standard okay so this is called hysteresis hysteresis h y s t e r e s i s hysteresis loop now we'll learn that if we further increase the load beyond c point it produces a large increase in the strain and the length of the wire will, will increase a lot and the stress corresponding to to the highest point is called the ultimate strength it is called ultimate strength we'll remove the portions i have written now you see here the ultimate point when the uh, the highest highest stress or uh, sorry uh, yeah that stress corresponding to the highest point is called the ultimate strength so asy here i had written that this is yield strength yield strength and asu this is the stress corresponding to the point where you see the the highest stress that is called ultimate ultimate strength ultimate strength ultimate strength now this is called ultimate strength is also called tensile strength tensile strength is the ratio of maximum load to which the wire may be subjected slowly by increasing the load to the original area of cross section of the wire that is called tensile stress okay or ultimate strength now we'll see beyond d point beyond d point beyond d what happens beyond d so beyond d we as we know we had increased the length of the wire like anything by putting load again like slowly increasing then what happens the wire actually becomes thinner and thinner as in length increases the wire will be thinned down and the thinning of the wire is not uniform now see at this region thinning of the wire wire gets i'll write the points okay let me clean everything so beyond d region beyond d what happens the wire wire gets thinned thinned but okay not but uh, and the thinning is not uniform thinning of here there will be double then thinned and the thinning of wire thinning of wire will not be uniform uniform okay it will not be uniform some points there will be a few points along its length where there will be constrictions developed at few points few points constriction constriction may develop may develop okay what do you mean by constrict uh, constrict so these are called actually next and west also and west 
make an OS will be found because the thinning is not becoming very uh, uniform. That's why those things will be created. Now the ultimate point E, that point at that point actually, if you increase the load. Okay, so if you even if you don't low like increase any load here beyond D point without even increasing load, the length of the wire goes on increasing. So another point is length of the wire length goes on increasing, goes on in increasing. Even without even even without increasing increasing load further. Okay. And now at the point E, at the point E, what will happen at E? At E, the wire breaks. Okay, wire breaks. Wire breaks. And this point is called fracture point, fracture point. So the point, this is called fracture point because here the wear breaks. So in the region B, between B and E, the length of the wear goes on increasing even without any addition of the load. The region is called plastic region. See, in between B to E, this region without adding much load, even without adding load the region like uh, the length of the wire goes on increasing so that's why this b to e called e region is called plastic region look this region whole region is called plastic region so this region is plastic region and this region is called elastic region okay so in plastic region as you know in plastic region even if you remove the load the wire is not going to regain its original length shape size etc so this is called elastic region this is elastic region elastic region so it is already marked over here you can see that so oab this region is actually elastic region and b to e that region is called plastic region because in this region even if you ap uh, apply very very less load or maybe negligible load still the length of the wire increases that region called plastic region and the material is said to undergo plastic flow or plastic deformation at this region the material is called material is going to have going to so this we have plastic deformation at this region plastic deformation plastic deformation da uh, okay just a minute plastic deformation will happen happen in in this region plastic deform Deformation, plastic deformation. Okay, so this is the case over here. So we have learnt OA region is the O sorry OB region is the plastic uh, sorry elastic region. BE region is called plastic region. B point B is called ill point or the elastic point. A point till A point it is called proportional. Limit. 
okay and b as like c to e this region is called plastic region and plastic deformation is going to occur in this region d at the point d the corresponding stress is called ultimate strength and the stress corresponding to b point is called yield strength and the point e is called fracture point because at this point the wire breaks wire breaks so that is called fracture point so we have learned the stress strain curve nicely now what we will do we will learn today one more topic then we will stop the class that is how do we classify materials upon seeing the stress strain curve or in other words what will be the nature of the stress strain curve for various materials so look according to the stress strain curve there are actually on the basis of stress strain curve there are three types of materials we can classify into the materials can be classified into three types okay one is brittle material as you see or let us write yes brittle as you see from the figure brittle brittle materials materials then you have ductile material ductile material and then you have plastic material so these are the main three classifications we can make plastic materials so let us first understand this brittle region see the material which have very small range of plastic extension very less portion of the plastic region look here there is almost nothing this plastic region is not there almost nothing so you have the proportional region okay i'm sorry i'll just rewrite brittle brittle material materials i'll write the properties of the brittle materials over here the materials which have the material which have very small range of very small range of plastic extension okay are called brittle material brittle material material okay so you can see here look there is almost nothing here this is the region which is called plastic region and that is missing here you look here this is this this is missing that's why it is called actually a brittle material okay this plastic extension this is the region is plastic region which is not there this is only elastic region is there okay such materials break soon as stress is increased beyond elastic limit see this this is uh, this kind of materials brittle materials they will break soon as you increase the load or the stress beyond the elastic limit okay we'll write the, that point also so such materials 
<coughs> material break soon upon increasing increasing sorry increasing the stress beyond elastic limit limit we'll take a few example of brittle material like cast iron and very common example is glass glass it breaks easily ceramics ceramics and cast irons iron okay cast iron so these are the examples of brittle materials glass ceramics cast iron okay these are brittle materials so we see here there is less extension of plastic region now we'll go to the ductile material see for the ductile materials it has large plastic region like large range of extension of plastic region look in this case this is a large range of plastic extension this is the large one large range of plastic extension plastic extension okay 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 we'll clean the brittle portion and then we'll write there plastic oh, sorry ductile material ductile so as a definition we can write the materials which have the materials which have large range of plastic extension extension okay are called ductile material okay so such such materials actually you can see the figure in this region this range is very very large okay this is the plastic plastic region sorry plastic plastic region so as you see the fracture point is widely separated from the elastic limit so this may be the elastic limit over here okay somewhere here and this fracture point is here so there is a large gap okay they are oil separated in this case so i'll write here second point this is the first point second point the elastic point elastic limit limit and fracture point fracture points are well separated well separated okay well separated such materials undergo irreversible increase in length before snapping so they undergo undergoes irreversible increase sibil increase
in length. Bip for snapping. Bip for snapping. Okay. So they can be made into. So that's why they can. They can be used. Can be used. Ductile material can be used to make thin wires. To make thin wires. Thin wires. Okay. And we'll we'll take a few examples. So examples are examples of ductile material. What are the examples of ductile materials like copper, silver, iron, aluminium, etc.? These are the soft irons, like uh, uh, soft metals, like relatively soft material. So copper, silver, then aluminium, aluminium. It's so these are ductile material okay so what are the properties of the ductile materials in this case we see plastic range is large and brittle uh, sorry the elastic point and the fracture point they are oil separated and that's why they undergo irreversible increase in the length before before they are snapped and such wire can be used to make thin like such materials can be used to make thin wires okay to make thin wires and examples are copper silver aluminium etc so this is about ductile materials now we'll learn something about plastic materials Okay, so third third one is the third category is plastic materials. Plastic materials. Actually, plastic materials are similar to ductile materials. Similar to ductile. ductile materials here also plastic region will be more okay and the elastic properties up to the limit see there is elastic limit at very very small range and plastic region is more so plastic material do not show any kind of hardening during plastic deformation actually here plastic deformation happens no hardening occurs no hardening occurs during plastic deformation deformation and this plastic deformation occurs only beyond elastic limit so it is plastic materials are similar to ductile materials and they exhibit elastic properties up to elastic limit exhibits elastic properties elastic properties 
properties till elastic limit elastic limit okay till elastic limit and after that it undergoes a plastic deformation and during plastic deformation there will be no hardening it shows no hardening so for example when external force is applied to bend a plastic spoon after a certain limit the plastic spoon will not retain its original position okay we know there are various plastic materials around in modern society so i don't have to name plastic like example give example for the plastic materials so we have learned how like what are the characteristics like how we can understand about materials from the stress strain curve that means like various portions of stress strain curve how what it represents and then in the second portion we had learned how to classify materials based on stress strain curve for metallic wire or in sorry this this should not be written metallic wire from the stress strain curve okay from the stress strain curve on the basis of stress strain curve so on the basis of stress strain curve there are like we can classify materials into three category one is brittle material another one is ductile material and the last category is the plastic material okay we had discussed these three materials in details from the graph system graph also hope you have understood and we'll stop the class here for today all right thank you bye for today